Everything I'm about to show you in this lecture is available in PHP 5, 5.1 and 5.4. You're probably going, why are you showing us this in a PHP 7 course? The reason being is because I want to cover this topic extensively and not just with partiality. So please do note that what I'm about to show you here doesn't just apply to PHP 7. And it is to do with type declarations, but this time it's to do with object types. And there is no polymorphism. So everything in the previous lecture to do with primitive data coercion, that is new in PHP 7. But everything I'm about to show you here is in older versions of PHP and there is no polymorphism whatsoever. It will not try to adapt the data. It's very strict and rigid. Now the first data type declaration that I'm about to show you will only allow an array to be passed in to an argument. Now this array can either be a zero indexed array or it could just be an associative array like so where you have a key and value pair. But right now we'll just stick with a standard zero index array and we're creating that array inside of the ARR variable and we're passing the contents of that variable, that array, to the first argument found in our function. And then all we're going to do is encode that in the JSON format and have that printed out in the browser. So let's go ahead and just save this now and then we can take a look at this in the browser and you can see that we have hello world another word. That's our array right here and we've just printed that out. Perfect. And if I try to go ahead and let's say pass in just a string or a number or a primitive type data then you will find that you'll get an error. And likewise, as mentioned previously, you can also have associative arrays that have key and value pairs. And I can pass this in ARR like so. I can go ahead and save that and then we can refresh. And there we go. We can see that our associative array was printed out in JSON. And it's important to note that this type declaration is available in PHP 5.1. Now we also have the ability to define a callable data type declaration. So what does this mean? Well, functions in PHP are first class citizens like some other programming languages. But what does that mean? Well, it means that it treats functions as objects. So if you can store an object in a variable or an array, or even an object inside of another object, then you can store a function inside of a variable, inside of an array, or inside of another function. I could literally write another function within this function. So functions are first class citizens. They're treated as objects. And likewise, as we can store functions inside of variables, that means we can store functions inside of arguments because arguments are just temporary variables. So in lieu of that fact, we now have a function pass and we are saying that this argument, this temporary variable is going to store a callable function. So that's that data type declaration. It means it's going to store a function. And then what we're going to do is when it executes, it's going to echo out, let's say, a string. So this function pass can do something. And then once this function has finished, we can then target the variable, the argument that contains our function, and then open and close the brackets right here to execute that function. So we're actually passing that function into our argument right here. We're saying the callback is equal to a function. So let's go ahead and undo that. So that function is a parameter that's being passed into the callback argument. So I can go ahead and save that now and let's refresh this in the browser. And notice that it says this string came from the pass function. So this was executed. And then it looked at the argument which contains the function right here. And it says callable function, this string came from the callback function, which it came right there. So it executed that function afterwards. And again, you can store this inside of a variable. So you can say dollar sign funk, and then you can pass that as a parameter. So I can say funk, 
save it, hit refresh, and there you go, you get exactly the same result. So functions are treated as first class citizens or objects. And the callable type declaration is available in PHP 5.4. Now as shown in the previous demonstration, we could set the declaration type to array and that means that it could receive just an object. We just wanna know if it's of the type object, if it's a zero, based index array or whether it's a standard object created from a class, whatever it is, it has to be an object. But the issue is, what if we want to make sure that this object came from a particular class? Well, we can actually do this. So what I've done here is I've defined two classes. So classes are here to build or create objects. And then I have said, right, I'm gonna create a new box variable and it's going to store a new cake object. So it's gonna invoke that class, and then it's going to build an object from that class. So now our box contains a cake. And then I'm going to call the restaurant function, I'm gonna invoke it, and I'm going to pass it that new cake object that I've just created. So now this parameter, which contains this value, will be sent to that argument. And what we're doing here is we're saying we want this argument to only contain an object that came from the cake class, which in my case it did. If we just move that back down again, the box variable contains an object that came from the cake class. And so this shouldn't error. And what we'll do then is we'll just simply dump this out so that we can view it in the browser. So if I now hit refresh, You'll now notice we have object and this object is from the cake class. So it did an error. But what if my box contained a salad? Well, this object came from the salad class and this argument right here can only contain an object that came from the cake class. Well, now we're gonna have a bit of a problem. If I hit refresh, you'll now notice it says there's been an error. It must receive an instance of cake, meaning an object that was created from a cake, an instance of cake. But instead it got an instance from salad, it got an object that was created from the salad class, and therefore it errored. This feature is available in PHP 5.0. And also there's another feature available to you in PHP 5.0, and that is checking for an interface. So I can now create an interface and all an interface does is it checks to make sure that your classes meet certain requirements with their methods and so forth. So I'm gonna create an interface called checker and I'm just gonna open and close my brackets. And then I'm going to say, well, I want the cake class to implement. So I'm gonna say that's gonna implement the checker interface. And then that will make sure that it has certain methods and properties on the class. And instead of writing the name of the class, what we want to do is we want to type the name of the interface right here, checker. So it's saying whatever this object is, it must be created by a class that implements the checker interface. That's what we're saying right there. It must comply with that interface. Now at the moment, don't forget, our box contains an object that came from the salad class. And that doesn't implement the checker interface. So if I save this and I hit refresh, you'll now notice it says, nope, sorry, it must implement the interface checker. Now let's go ahead and change that to cake and go ahead and save that and then hit refresh. Now you'll notice it did an error because this object came from the cake class, but it's not interested in the class anymore. It's interested in whether that class implements the checker interface, and it did. So that object came from a class that implements that specific interface, nice and easy. And what's nice about checking for an interface is the fact that an interface can be applied to multiple classes. So now 
I can implement the checker interface on the salad class. I can say, make that a new salad object like so, save that and hit refresh. And again, it didn't error. And if I take that interface off, hit refresh, I get an error because this object right here must implement that interface. And in our case, I created a new salad object. It doesn't implement that interface. We get an error. Next up, I'd like to show you the self declaration data type. Now it's important to note that this declaration data type must be used within a class. Otherwise, if you don't use it within a class, you will get an error. So what is this self declaration type? Well, what it's doing is it's saying that this argument right here can only receive an object that came from this class or it came from itself. So now that I have this class defined and we have this icing method, I'm then going to instantiate this class, meaning create an object from the class. And we have cake one and that's equal to new cake and cake two. And again, I'm going to create a new instance of the cake class right here. So we have two cake objects and they're identical. And then all I'm doing is I'm targeting the second cake, cake two, and then I'm invoking the icing method. And I'm passing in cake one right here. So cake one contains a cake instance, a new cake object. So this is essentially what we're doing. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, right, is this object right here an instance of itself, an instance of this class? The answer is yes, a new cake right here is an instance of this class. And what it will do is it will then print out some simple pieces. And then we'll just print out some simple text saying cake to ice, put in a line break, and then we will var dump out the contents of this argument right here. So let's go ahead and save this and hit refresh and we should not get an error. And we didn't because what it did was it said, okay, the object that we received in our this cake argument was in fact from itself, this class. So it came from the cake class. Now, if you tried to, let's say, create another class to build another type of object, pudding. And cake one contained an instance of pudding. So now the object that's being created right here came from the pudding class. And then that object is then being passed to the icing. This then means that the object no longer comes from the cake class. So let's go ahead and save this and hit refresh. And you'll notice now that it's saying, oh, there is a serious error here. The argument must contain an instance of cake. So there you have it. All of the declaration data types that you can declare on your arguments.